Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, beautiful friends. First of all, uh, let me express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Randep Sudan, who have already been with, here with us to share about his knowledge, his insights about digitalization that we can uh, do, that we can apply in our uh, educational uh, program. Now, it is an honor for us, Mr. Randip. Welcome to Bina Insani University. Then, um, let us give the floor to Mr. Randip to introduce himself. Mr. Randip, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, thank you, Pak Indra. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here today at the Bina Insani University. And uh, we had some very good interactions so far. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Randeep Sudan, and uh, I am currently working on a project on behalf of the Asian Development Bank uh, for uh, designing a program on work-based learning uh, for students in Indonesia. Uh, before uh, working on this project, uh, I have been uh, working with a number of uh, institutions, uh, one being the World Bank, uh, where I was uh, leading uh, their digital development unit uh, for the bank. And uh, prior to that, I worked with the government in India, where I was a member of the Indian Administrative Service. So my primary area of interest is digital strategy and uh, transformation of societies uh, using digital technologies. So it is in that context that I'm very excited uh, to be here to interact uh, with uh, the faculty and of course, uh, Park Indra uh, at this university. And I very much look forward to this university uh, becoming very successful, you know, in the years ahead. Thank you, Mr. Randeep. Now, uh... Yeah, you have already shared with us before something about work-based learning. Can you explain further about this to our audience? Sure. So we find that uh, the labor market is uh, witnessing uh, a lot of disruption because of new technologies which are coming up. Uh, especially if you look at artificial intelligence, you look at uh, even things like uh, generative AI, uh, the expectation is that uh, there will be a lot of churn and a lot of disruption in labor markets. So a lot of uh, skills may become redundant uh, while there may be uh, the necessity to actually acquire new skills uh, to be able to benefit from new opportunities. Now, if uh, this is the sort of uh, a paradigm which is emerging, then uh, education has to adapt and has to change with the times so that uh, there is a close connect between what universities offer in terms of education and what are the needs of the labor market and what companies require in terms of skills and competencies. Now, to be able to achieve this connection, it is uh, becoming increasingly important that uh, uh, there are opportunities uh, where uh, students can work on projects or can work on problems or on challenges which are being faced by the private sector. And as part of working on these uh, different aspects, acquire skills which are actually in demand by companies and the private sector. Mm -hmm. So it is in this uh, broad context that uh, work-based learning becomes important. So we are trying to see uh, what might be good ways in which uh, this, these opportunities to develop skills in uh, real life contexts can be facilitated. And it is also important that these skills are acquired in a more global context because the opportunities in the future will increasingly be global. And with new technologies, it will become much easier uh, to plug in 
to opportunities which are outside one's geographical boundaries, uh, so to speak. And uh, especially with uh, developments which are going on on digital technologies, uh, if you look at uh, you know what's happening, even in terms of uh, immersive technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality, you see what is uh, happening with new products like Vision Pro being launched by Apple. Uh, these all are pointers to an emerging world where geography will be history, right? Borderless. So, yes, so it's a borderless world. And in that borderless world, the job opportunities will increasingly uh, be global and one has to prepare the workforce and prepare, uh, you know, universities and students to be able to benefit from those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that context, uh, we need to devise new ways of integrating work-based learning uh, with the regular educational programs and do so in a manner which uh, creates a more global mindset for students, which will become very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, the internationalization program mm -hmm. for the students and also digitalization. So how do we do the international internship by using a digital platform? Are you, uh, do you have opinion about this? Yes. So for example, if one can work uh, with student teams drawn from different universities, mm -hmm. which are geographically in different uh, regions uh, and work for companies which are outside one's national borders, for example, Mm -hmm. can provide uh, some exposure uh, both in terms of what problems are being faced by companies which are outside of Indonesia, for example, mm -hmm. and also afford the opportunity of uh, students from Indonesia working with students from other geographies, mm -hmm. maybe in Europe, maybe in the US, maybe in India, Australia. So these opportunities, the way that uh, it could be done at scale is that uh, you identify a problem or a challenge that you're working on with one or more companies, which may be international. Mm -hmm. And then you work as part of student teams drawn from different universities to focus and converge on that one problem, identify solutions, maybe individually as part of, say, the Indonesian team, they find the solutions to a given problem. Mm -hmm. And there are students from Europe who find uh, solutions for the same problem mm -hmm. but at some point you bring these teams together and exchange what is their thinking about the problem and what are the solutions that they are proposing mm -hmm. so that then you know out of that interaction uh, something which is of value for that company emerges mm -hmm. and this interaction itself between two teams which have been working on the same problem mm -hmm. and are trying to find uh, value for the client for whom they are working is a very valuable experience. Okay. So, so that is an approach I think which might be scalable using digital technologies because students need not physically relocate to that company mm -hmm. for whom they are trying to solve a challenge. Mm -hmm. They could remotely uh, do market research, could do you know all the relevant work and uh, connect uh, using digital technologies and then find solutions. Okay. Further talking about internship, that what we are doing so far that we just uh, uh, give the students an uh, application letter uh, to be handed in to the company and then the company will call them uh, for giving them the opportunity to do the internship. And then after that, uh, we score their performance by the report they make. So do you see some uh, processes that should be inserted to make it more useful, more uh, beneficial for this program. What is the missing here? Right. So I think the issue which is central to this is that if you are to give an experience of solving a challenge to students for a company, then the company has to identify that challenge. Mm. And uh, then, uh, you know, you create a program around solving that challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem here is that uh, you have to every now and then go to a company which has to do, do some thinking about what challenge it should offer where students could add value. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is uh, a process which has a degree of friction in it. Mm-hmm. It is not a smooth process mm-hmm. because every time you have to think, uh, you know, something different and mm-hmm. then consciously say that, okay, let's work on this particular project. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have to achieve scale, the process may have to be different. Mm-hmm. And one uh, idea that is on the table is that every company uh, would be thinking about what are the business opportunities and business risks that it is likely to confront in the near, medium and long term. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it's in the very nature of business to look at opportunities and look at risks. Mm. So if we were to engage student teams with companies focused on just this particular issue mm. of how do you identify the business opportunities for this company mm-hmm. and the business risks mm-hmm. in a time frame which is near, medium and long term, mm-hmm. this would have uh, a couple of benefits. Number one, uh, students would have to be very broad spectrum in terms of their domain knowledge Mm -hmm. to be able to identify those opportunities and risks. Mm -hmm. Now, this broad spectrum, cross-domain thinking, integrative thinking and being creative as part of that process Mm -hmm. is an enduring skill. Mm -hmm. It is applicable to any job that a student may subsequently take Mm -hmm. up Mm -hmm. and it is applicable to, you know, any uh, maybe it's a technical problem, maybe it's a you know, marketing problem, maybe it's a production process problem, all, you know, this integrative thinking skill will apply in all types of situations. Mm -hmm. So that's one advantage that you are imparting a very broad spectrum of skills, uh, which is an enduring skill to students. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you are creating some opportunities or exploring some opportunities for business where it can get into new directions. Mm -hmm. Now, that is also valuable for growing the economy if you think of it in very broad terms because you may be engaging student teams, for example, with small and medium enterprises Mm -hmm. who do not have the bandwidth to hire expensive consultants Mm -hmm. to do this type of work for them. Mm -hmm. But the process, if it is able to define an opportunity which is of value to SMEs, Mm -hmm. that itself is a positive for the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the you know, units which create a lot of jobs eventually. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, positive, uh, you know, fallout, if you will, uh, from this process. So Mm -hmm. that's again uh, a plus. And uh, of course, a third plus is that this constant engagement with industry and working on the future uh, also would help uh, to see that the curriculum of universities is more uh, connected to what is happening in the in the business world out there. And to that extent, there's some some feedback loop which is coming in. Mm -hmm. What is important for companies? What is not? Mm -hmm. What is a risk? What's an Mm -hmm. opportunity? Mm -hmm. And uh, that itself may be a good feedback mechanism to see that the curriculum is kept current Mm -hmm. with what is the requirement out there. So what is exactly the company uh, expect from the intern actually? Yeah, so the company would uh, expect, for example, let's, let's take an example. If there is a company uh, which is uh, saying that, look, I have uh, uh, all this data and uh, what might be, uh, you know, a product or a service that I could offer with this data and uh, is there any other data out there which could be used as a complement to offer some innovative service, just for example. Okay. Now, what would happen is that uh, following a process which is uh, normally termed as strategic futures or strategic foresight, uh, you know, a student or a student team can follow a process in terms of identifying what might be those opportunities and what is the nature of this data, uh, whether this data can be leveraged to realize those opportunities. And if you have to realize that opportunity, do you require further data which can be accessed, which might be publicly available for all you know, and suddenly you have a good understanding uh, which is uh, looking at data in a completely new and innovative way. It would help students to understand what data you know companies have, how they are currently using data, how this data could be managed differently, what might be alt data which is outside the company, which could be leveraged to think about a particular problem and devise a solution for that. So the, the sky is the limit because there's no limit here. You can be very creative 
in terms of what uh, value you can bring to the company but at the end of the day the bottom line is that it should help the company to you know realize some value that would be the test of how effective this engagement would be so innovation uh creation yes. is very important in this exactly exactly <laughs> okay and if you force students or you uh, i think force is not the right term but if you encourage students mm-hmm. to be thinking like that mm-hmm. and uh, always being always think about what opportunities might be there that discipline of thinking across domains and uh, being able to think convergently on a problem to solve it mm-hmm. is a very valuable skill mm-hmm. it is something which would uh, you know be very useful to them as mm-hmm. part of their careers going forward okay well <laughs> so amazing amazing talk so what is our conclusion today i think we all agree that the company need to be competitive in the market exactly so in order to be competitive uh, the students especially for the intern can contribute something here just help the company to solve the problem just help the company to create added value with the hope that added value become uniqueness of the company uh, with the hope also the uniqueness become a competitive advantage of the company uh, with the hope also that the company can create a remarkable business performance so if that happens then the company will accept the interns and will never consider uh, internship is a uh, wasting of time right. but uh, more than uh, like uh, an investment for the future of the company exactly. this is it the discussion for today and i hope we can meet in other occasion and at last but not least i just want to say thank you to mr randip uh, sudan for an amazing inspiration and see you in other occasion bina insani university bigger better higher <laughs> thank you sir thank you thank you <laughs> pleasure <laughs>